The family of Kenya native Wangari Mathai has announced that the Nobel Peace Laureate will be cremated in Nairobi on Saturday. A family spokesman says the cremation is being carried out according to the environmental icon's wishes. A tree planting ceremony will also be held Saturday to commemorate her life. Mathai died of cancer at age 71 on September 25th. For more discussion on, on Wangari Mathai and other issues, we are pleased to be joined by Alkana Odembo, the Kenyan ambassador to the United States. Mr. Odembo, welcome to In Focus. Thank you, sir. Thank you now, much. first on uh, Professor Wangari Mathai, the Moi regime reviled her, uh, but uh, the Kibaki government has honored her with a two-day uh, uh, state funeral. What statement is being made here? Thank you, Makari. Um, two, two statements are being made. Uh, one, when you talk about the Moi regime and the fact that uh, she was reviled, um, she was an agitator. She was fight, fighting. She was a fighter for social justice. And those were the days when social justice was not uh, uh, an arena that uh, the government uh, took to very kindly. Uh, so Wangari Madai uh, at that time uh, stood out, uh, stepped forward, uh, and fought for the things that she believed for. Uh, the current government uh, has seen it fit to, uh, to honor Wangari with uh, a state burial. The, the third, the, uh, we've only had two, uh, the first, the, the father of the nation, uh, Mzee Jomo Kenyatta, and then uh, the late, uh, the former vice president, uh, Kijana Omalwa. So Wangari really is, uh, is the third in, in our history of uh, close to 50 years. And, uh, and, and the only woman, uh, of course, who has been bestowed with such that, an honor. That's a great it honor. Is, it is an honor. <coughs> yeah. uh, now, the world is uh, always going to remember Wangari as this great Kenyan woman who planted trees to preserve <coughs> the future generations. How will you personally remember Wangari Mathai? How will Kenyans remember Wangari Mathai? That's a good question. How will I remember Wangari? Let me tell you, when, when I first met Wangwa, Wangari, the Green Belt Movement, the early 90s, the, one of the first questions that she asked me, I was working in civil society in the NGO sector, and she asked me, how many trees, Elkana, have you planted in your lifetime? So yes, when we think about Wangari, we think about trees. Uh, but Wangari Madai was more than just trees. Wangari used tree planting and environmental conservation as a way to fight a lot of the ills and injustices in our society. She fought for basic human rights. She fought for women's uh, situation. She fought against uh, land grabbing and corruption. Uh, so she used the tree planting was her means of making a statement, but she made many statements with that tree planting. So it was not just tree planting for the sake of tree planting, which of course was an important thing to, to do, uh, but I think over the years, uh, looking at the different things that she did, using tree planting as her platform, uh, she fought many battles mm -hmm. uh, and used the tree planting as her sort of weapon, as it were, yeah. uh, to fight those different battles. Thank you. Uh, yep. What a great woman she was. Now I let's understand. turn uh, quickly to an upcoming event right here in Washington, D.C., and this is the Kenya Diaspora Conference. Uh, okay. Just briefly, what is this conference? What is the objective of this conference? We are bringing together Kenyans. We have registered uh, close to 500 Kenyans from all over the United States. We have realized as a country that the diaspora are a very important part of, of Kenya's development. We are going to be sharing with them our Vision 2030, which is Kenya's strategic plan towards becoming a middle-income country by the year 2030. We want the diaspora to be very much a part of it. So we want to give them an opportunity to look at it, internalize it, and uh, uh, share with us their thoughts of how they think they can be a part of this vision. Uh, there's no question that the Kenyans in the U.S. are very passionate about home. Uh, what is the government specifically doing to make it easier, to make it more attractive to invest back home? A number of things. Our new constitution, as you know, has provided for dual citizenship, for example. Uh, our new constitution has also provided for uh, the possibility for a vote for Kenyans. So as we head towards elections uh, in the coming year, 2012, uh, Kenyans will be able to, Kenyans abroad, will be able uh, to vote and exercise their rights as, uh, as Kenyans. Uh, these are very basic but very fundamental in terms of helping people to feel connected, but also helping them to be a part of uh, the decision of where Kenya is going uh, in the years to come. They'll be voting in the leadership, they'll be determining 
the governance and the leadership of the country in the years to come. Yeah. So uh, sometimes Kenyans uh, hesitate to invest heavily uh, back home because of fears of uh, incidents like the violence of 2007. And now we're witnessing even violence in parts of Kenya and Lamo. How do you reassure Kenyans that the government, uh, the country, will be a peaceful place tomorrow for them to go back to, for them to invest in? A lot has happened since the elections of 2007 and the post-election violence of early 2008. Uh, since then, we have a new constitution, so a lot of the things that we can attribute to bad governance that contributed towards the, the violence that we saw after the elections of 2007, to a great extent, those have been dealt with. We have a completely new judiciary. We've overhauled the entire judiciary. We have a new chief justice, a new attorney general. Uh, we have appointed new judges. Uh, these are the assurances that give people, uh, both Kenyans and also uh, outsiders, international community and uh, uh, investors, that uh, we now have a system that, they, that is predictable, that they can count on. Justice uh, will prevail with the new judiciary in place. Um, and, and the government, of course, has done a lot in terms of just uh, the regulations and the environment for enabling uh, private investment and, and, and business. Uh, mm. to, uh, to, to, to thrive uh, in Kenya. Yeah. Well, yeah. Let's hope that uh, we look forward to even better days yes. ahead of us. Um, the conference sure. is on the 8th and 9th. It's on the 8th and the 9th, yeah. and yes, also yeah. the fact that you mentioned Wangari. It's very important to know that we are also remembering Wangari here in Washington. We have a condolence book that we have uh, put out. We've announced that. And on yeah. the evening Thank of the 8th, yeah. we will have an event, a reception yeah. to honor Wangari. Thank you. And uh, Thank we you will also much. have a celebration on Thank the 20th. Thank you, Ambassador Odembo. Thank you very Thank much you. Uh, for you very taking much. your time to uh, come and speak with us here today on In Focus. Okay.